Hello everyone, in this video let's solve a few problems related to rock and soil mechanics. Um, if you want to um, have a good background in these topics, uh, be sure to check out our lectures. Um, but for the purposes of this video, let's try to solve a few problems. Alright, let's start with the first problem here. Um, this is on our Mohr Coulomb failure criteria. So what they have done is they have given us four different envelopes and what they're asking for is um, they want to know which out of these four is a failure criteria for test state Y, which is this circle over here, but not test state X, which is this one. So in other words, what they're saying is um, which out of these envelopes applies to Y, that is which out of these four lines is a tangent to this circle but not this one. So you can look at them, you can look at the first one. Well, the first one over here, you'll see it's tangent to it, but it's not tangent to um, X. That is, it's tangent to Y, it's not tangent to X. And if you look at the other ones, well, this is not tangent to any of them. Um, this one, you'll see is tangent to x, but it's not tangent to y. That's not what we're looking for. And again, like this one is not tangent to any of them. So we can see how this is the failure criteria for y, but not x. Therefore, our solution is a. All right, easy. Let's move on to the next problem. Um, so for this problem, what we have is, uh, they have given us a maximum and minimum principal stresses as sigma one and sigma three. So essentially what they're saying is max is sigma one, minimum is sigma three. Um, and what they're saying is the differential stress state can have an absolute value greater than sigma one. When can that happen? Well, um, essentially differential between them is quite simply sigma one minus sigma three. Um, so when can this absolute value of sigma one minus sigma three will pretty much always be greater than sigma one? And they have given us four options here. Um, a, B, and C, and D, and uh, and yeah, um, we can kind of like use the process of elimination to find um, which out of these four is a solution. So if I was to look at A here, um, sigma one and sigma three are both compressive. Well, compression or tension, let's denote like a sign convention to it, let's say compression is positive, and let's say tension is negative, then our A is going to be what? It's gonna be positive sigma one minus our positive sigma three because both sigma one and sigma three are compressive. And that's gonna be a differential. And we can see that this does not necessarily have to be um, greater than um, sigma one. So that's just not true. Or let's say that's not always true. Um, for B, it says sigma one is compressive and sigma three is tensile. Um, which in other words, what they're saying is our sigma one is positive or compressive minus our sigma three is tensile or negative. That means sigma one plus sigma three. Now you can see that this expression is always gonna be greater than sigma one. So this seems like this could be our answer. Now we can look at other cases here for C and D. For C, sigma one 
and sigma three are equal. So that's an easy one. It's going to be zero. So that's not it. Um, sigma one and sigma three are both tensile. So let's for part D, they're both tensile. That means minus sigma one minus minus sigma three equals well sigma three minus sigma one. So that does not necessarily have to be greater than sigma one. So we can see B is our answer here, and and we'll check B. Um, yeah, you can you can also um, look this from a perspective of Mohr circle. So like if I was to draw a Mohr circle for this, you know, it would be something like both are compressive, and if my sigma is positive here, it would be something like this, you know. Whereas for B, you know, it's going to be, if I have to draw it out, it's going to be something like um, my sigma 1 is compressive, my sigma 1 is compressive, my sigma 3 is tensile. So I'm going to take it to a negative, and this can be our sigma 1, and this can be our sigma 3, you know, and this is just 0. And if they were both in tension, they would both be on this side, um, on the left side of our y-axis. So it would be more like, say, sigma 3 here and sigma 1, and they'll both be in tension. This is our tau, and this is our sigma on the x-axis. But yeah, um, fairly easy question. Um, B is our answer. Let's move on to the next one. All right, um, we have another problem on Mohr Coulomb here. Um, they have given us our Mohr Coulomb um, failure criteria um, and circles in this plot. And our problem three and four are dependent on this plot here. So starting with problem three, what they're asking for is what is point B? What is this? Uh, is it uniaxial uni tensile strength, compressive strength, is it indirect tensile strength, or is it like a shear strength? Um, it's a pretty easy one. It's a uniaxial compressive strength. And why is that? Well, if I was to, for point B, draw out a unit stress block over here, you see, you know, how we always show You know, this is say sigma x, this is say sigma y, and say we have our tau here, which is say something like this. Now for point P, you see this equals zero, or you can say this equals zero. So one of our principal stresses is zero, and you see tau at point P is also zero, you know? So what you can say is, um, since these are zero, you can just ignore this, and then all that you're left with are essentially just your uniaxial, about a single axis compressive stress, which is sigma, and that's why it is our uniaxial compressive strength in this case. All right, moving on to problem four. Um, for a condition represented by circle one, our circle one is this guy over here. So for this circle, if they're saying if pore water pressure increases, how is this circle gonna change? Like, is this number one gonna look like number three? Is it gonna look like number five, number four, number two? What is it gonna end up looking if we increase the water pressure? Well, um, this is a pretty easy one too. You see our stresses are always called, our, our stress in our limestone is essentially total stress minus um, pore water pressure. So this is pore water pressure. So 
if say my let's call this say anything say let's call this sigma three let's call this sigma one now if i increase my pore water pressure it is going to become say sigma three minus let's increase this by say a value delta x it's going to change to sigma three minus delta x and my sigma one is going to decrease my sigma three is going to decrease and it's going to change to sigma one minus delta x so you see how this whole circle kind of just shifts um so you see this shifting in the negative direction number two circle two is the solution to this other circles like they have other scenarios where the circle gets bigger or it gets smaller or this circle moves towards the right that is it in, it just shifts to the right in a positive direction none of those apply in this case um, it is really it should shift towards the left where it just moves towards the left every all our stresses decrease by one single value of u and that's the solution in this case all right moving on to the next problem um so what's the unit for shear modulus um that's an easy one so we know like like stress over strain is young's modulus just how this is for normal stresses we can say for shear stress and shear strain, we have our um, shear modulus, say this. Um, I don't know what's going on over here. But yeah, um, so for this, for G shear modulus here, what is a unit? Well, it is just stress over strain, you know? And we know our stress is force over area divided by our strain is, you know, like change in length over length, you know, or force is what? Like mass times acceleration, mass times acceleration you know um, this is our force divided by our area area is um, meter square um, change in length is meter length is meter we cancel so it's unitless um, so if you solve for this you end up with kilogram meter over meter square second square cancel this one out so finally your answer is kilogram per meter per second square which is let's see um a yeah that's your solution for this one pretty easy uh let's move on to the next problem okay this is kind of an interesting problem. Um, so in this problem, what they're asking for is a displacement matrix. What they're saying is, say if you have a rectangle, which looks like this, and it is deformed into a parallelogram of equal area by simple shear deformation with shear strain gamma, parallel to axis or the x-axis so let's say if i draw out my axis over here let's say we call this x-axis let's call this y-axis um what you can see is when it goes into a simple shear deformation you know you put shear force on it and then it deforms like this where this is gamma a shear strain um, 
Now what it's asking for is, what is this displacement matrix going to be? So simply put, a displacement matrix is nothing but, let's say a, a displacement matrix D, when you multiply any uh, ordinate, say X or Y, say some point which was at X and Y, when you multiply that point by displacement matrix, it gives you its new location, essentially, you know? So let's pick a point. Um, initially, our rectangle was here. Let's pick a point, let's call this one in this corner. This point was X comma Y, and then it became some value over here which is, um, we know this is y. Sorry about that. Um, so we know this did not change along y. It's still y, but it changed into x plus, it was initially x and it, 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 it changed by what? This over here, you know? What is this? This is by basic trigonometry gamma, times, if this is our y here, gamma times y for a small angle gamma, you know? So x plus gamma y. So this is our new point, you know? So it went from x, y to x plus gamma y comma y. So what it's saying is, which out of these four is a displacement matrix? Well, it's very easy to find out. Um, you can use the process of elimination in this one. Uh, what you can do is you can multiply each one of them by x, y here. And then see for yourself that which, when you do mu matrix multipl multiplication, which out of these four is going to give you this answer. And... Um, so like, let's try with A, you know, this is gonna be X gamma plus zero X. Well, that's not it. This doesn't match this one. Um, this is gonna be zero plus gamma Y um, over and then comma X. That's not it. This one is gonna be zero plus y and then gamma x plus zero. That's not it. Okay, we have the last one. Let's see, this is gonna be x plus gamma y and then y and that's it, we have a match. Um, so our answer is D in this case and that's the solution. Alrighty. Um, Let's move on to the next problem here. Um, this one is pretty easy, I think. Um, so this is, this problem is about finding a uniaxial compressive strength of the rock and what we are given is our Young's modulus at 50% strength and our modulus ratio. Okay, well, what is modulus ratio? We know our modulus ratio, let's say M, is our Young's modulus at 50% strength divided by our compressive strength. Um, this implies our compressive strength equals E Young's modulus at 50% over our um, modulus m um, that is and we have both of these value here so all you got to do is like 60 gpa over um, m which is 500 that's given to us here um, when you solve this this is going to give you 0 0.12 gpa gigapascal if you want to change gigapascal to megapascal you can just multiply 10 to the power 3 megapascal or 
120 megapascal. So this answer is just 120 over here. Um, pretty straightforward problem. Um, I mean, what is uh, this modular ratio anyways? Let's talk about this real quick because it's, maybe you'll find it interesting. So if I was to draw a stress strain curve for a rock, say I put stress on a rock and plot it, um, let's say rock A, then let's say our stress strain curve looks like this and this is where it just fails. Um, this is say for rock A. Um, and now say we have some other rock, which is, let me choose a different color here. Let's say blue. A different rock gives us a stress strain relationship, which is similar to this, but it fails before it. It, it fails over here. And let's say this is B. Let's call this B. And let's say we have another rock Let's call it C for which stress strain looks, say, something like this. So this is C. Um, now, how do we even like differentiate between all of these? Like, if you, if I were to ask you, like, hey, like, is A better than B? B better than C? Like, like, what parameter would you kind of use to kind of classify these rocks, you know? Like if you were to use sigma, well, I don't know, like sigma is highest for this one, okay? But for B and C, you see this sigma is the same, but they're not the same rock because B stress strain relationship looks something like this, whereas for C, it looks something like this. So that's not a good measure. Um, well, in that case, should you look at slope? You know, slope for B is something and slope for C is something different. Well, now you're looking at B and A where they both have the same slope or Young's modulus, but A fails much later than B. So essentially we have this definition of modulus ratio which kind of incorporates both Young's modulus and the compressive strength, um, just so you're looking at both of these and not just one or the other. And they're looking at stain at 50%. Why 50%? Um, I mean, if you were gonna do a test in real world and you were gonna stress a rock, it would look, your data would look like something like this, you know? This is your curve. Now, if you were to look at your slope or draw a tangent, is it like this? Is it like this? Like where should you draw the tangent, you know? Well, just to be consistent, a good place to draw the tangent is at 50%, 50% compressive strength, because this is a fairly good approximation of your real theoretical Young's modulus. So that's why we use 50% here. So yeah, um, just a few problems for today. Um, if you are interested in learning uh, some of these concepts, be sure to check out our lectures on planet geology, link in the description. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was useful to you. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.